Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. So if you watch my channel, you might have noticed that this is not my usual setup. Things look and hopefully sound more professional. Essentially, about a year ago, Sweetwater helped me turn my spare room into a proper home content creation studio. And I love it. Creating content here has been so much easier in this dedicated space. But the other week I ran into a studio gear problem that needed to be resolved and, and it was an emergency. I literally could not create content until it was resolved. And so some emergency sweet water boxes showed up in my garage. Let's go back in time, go behind the scenes and let me show you what happened. First box. All right, so we still have this pile in the garage that Shivani has said that I need to get rid of. So, time to work our way through it. The guitar boxes are tempting because I have literally no idea what's inside of them. My relationship with Schechter is very bizarre, but that's a story for another day. So I'm thinking the one that's hiding down here, being a bit shy, so let's go ahead, open it up. might not look too impressive, but this is a big upgrade. Red Pringle. She's like, I have no idea what we're even looking at. Oh, who's getting a milk bone right after we're done filming? All right, let me explain what's going on here. This is a Shure SM7B. Now, for the entirety of the YouTube channel, like literally since I started it, I have been using this. It's an AKG P120. It's a condenser microphone that you can buy brand new for $80. Back in the day before we had outrageous inflation, it was closer to like 50. If you're starting a YouTube channel and you want some decent audio, this is decent. This is very decent. But after years of literally daily use, it's starting to give out. And so that brings us to the SM70B. And it says right on the box, legendary vocal microphone. They're not lying. You see this thing everywhere. I mean, it's the gold standard right now, and I'm starting to take my job seriously one piece at a time. Like, I literally just now, in 2023, upgraded to a 4K camera as well. In the box, it comes with a bunch of sure swag, and an even bigger mic hat? I don't know what these are called. <laughs> Super professional YouTube channel, as always. Sweetwater candy, very important. And then this some dynamite. I love this packaging. It's so ridiculous. Big Acme cartoon vibes. So this is an inline microphone preamp, the secret weapon for passive dynamic and ribbon microphones. Ruthlessly delivers 28 decibels of gain, dangerously low noise design, which is kind of the opposite of what comes to mind when I think of dynamite, but we move. And the last thing is a Claret Plus 8. Because I was like, you know what, if I'm going to upgrade the microphone, I may as well upgrade the interface. Right now I'm using the older Claret 8 Pre, the non-plus version. And I don't really have any complaints with it. It does exactly what I need it to do. And believe it or not, I am using pretty much all of the inputs, either for my rack gear, or I've even got some of the lunchbox heads running direct into the interface. It's a lot of fun to mess around with these, playing straight into your DAW. So anyways, the plus is supposed to have better preamps, more range, more headroom than the older version, so I can keep everything the same, just with better preamps. So yeah, step by step, becoming a more professional YouTuber. Speaking of which, I just got back from GearFest, and I've never tried anything Universal Audio, so let's go ahead, open it up, and see how it is. Oh, wow. 
wow. I see. So this is UA's attempt to dethrone the king. That is a very nice looking microphone. I gotta say, the packaging, I mean, even the microphone looks cleaner than the SM7B. And there are a couple other differences, like the XLR is at the bottom, whereas this has the little cable coming out. I know it's not guitars. I know it's nerdy studio shit. You know, for as much time as I spend creating content, it's not really a world I'm too familiar with. Like, I always just use tools to get the job done, which is always my recommendation. Just use the tools that gets the job done. But my passion for this stuff doesn't just lie with the super cool guitars or the fucking sexy amps with a billion tubes. It's the whole process. And so learning more about this world to create better content or being able to give recommendations if you guys are trying to create content of your own, that's really exciting for me. So anyways, stoked to put these to good use. I'm gonna install everything later in the video, but first let's get into the other boxes, make sure we've got everything we need. So yeah, Sweetwater have sponsored this video and realistically have saved my ass because I literally was frozen. Couldn't record any content for you guys. Sweetwater, they're the best. Anytime I need anything guitar or general gear related, they're my first stop. They're a bunch of gearheads just like us. So the customer experience is so good. Links to all the gear shown in the video will be in the description. If you want to start your own content creation journey, or you can bookmark my affiliate link in the description for later. It helps support the channel by letting them know that I sent you. And with that, let's get into the next box. Next box. And you're not going to believe this. I actually found another one hiding in the corner. And if it's what I think it is, it'll go real well with the theme of this unboxing. So let's go ahead, open it up. <laughs> Damn. String swing with the hookup. So if you've watched my multi-part series where I put this studio together, you know already I'm a huge fan of string swing. Big, big fan. And the thing is, I don't know how, but I've run out of room. Actually, I do know. I have a fucking problem. And string swing is an enabler. So we've got walnut wood and wall hangers. Got a walnut multi guitar rack. Got one of their single stands. And I'm a huge fan of this one, by the way. And then a couple more arms for the multi wall hanger. Because while they say five is the recommended per rail, technically, and I've confirmed this with string swing you can fit more. You know, maybe I should take this as a sign that I should sell stuff. And actually there is some stuff on my reverb story if you wanna check that out. But also sometimes I just get a lot of guitars into demo and I need some place to put them while I work on the videos. See, my problem continues to be a problem because I can justify it. Huge shout out to String Swing, they're awesome. Can't recommend their stuff enough. Anyways, I'm not gonna assemble this all right now because that's a whole project. But I do wanna put this stand together because I really like it as a display. So let's go ahead and do that now. Alright, sick. These look pretty damn good. Very pretty cool. But yeah, cool. So these are done. I'll give you an update on the rest of the string swing stuff later. But for now, get back into the boxes and finish up the studio upgrade. And then get you a milk bone. Right, pretty cool. Last box of the episode. We'll save the two Schecter boxes for next time. And we'll finish off today's unboxing with this long boy. Don't know what's inside here, so let's go ahead, open it up. Nice, it's a beefy boom arm. And I especially appreciate that the XLR cable is running right through it. That helps keep everything clean, or realistically in my fucked setup more clean. When it comes to putting together audio content, you just got wires everywhere, so every little bit helps. Here it is compared to the one that I was using, so as you can see, construction on this one, pretty flimsy. This one is much beefier. See this side, there's a tiny amount of 
super thin padding, nothing on this side. Whereas this has a decent amount on both sides to protect your desk. Just overall, even at a glance, so much nicer. And of course, candy. What do we have this time? Actually a pretty decent haul. We've got a Tootsie Roll and a Fruit Chews in there. So let's go ahead and set these up with the new mics. 10 seconds later. Oh dear fucking god. There's a lot of shit happening back here behind the desk. Now luckily, like all of this is for the amp switcher. So it's not as bad as it initially seems. I mean, the wire management is fucking garbage, but that's a separate issue we move. All six rear inputs are being used for something. Make things easier, I've labeled all of them. And since the inputs and outputs align one to one with the new interface, it should be fairly straightforward. I mean, no, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. What I mean is at least I don't have to figure out which wire goes where. All right, let's swap these interfaces and put the new mics in place. All right, perfect, it's all wired up. Let's just ignore how messy my desk is. Now I've got this one, so I'll have better audio when I'm filming the writing sections, and this one for when I'm filming basically everything else. All running into the new interface, which is working beautifully. Like you can see from the levels, both mics are picking up my talking. Absolutely stoked with this new audio setup. I mean, I do appreciate the challenge of just cobbling things together and just making the gear work, but I'm not gonna lie, just looking at this, makes it feel like a much more professional production. So yeah, that's the de facto studio build update vlog, like a year later. In a way, I'm kind of sad it's losing that cobbled together from Craigslist nostalgic vibe. On the other hand, the fact that it's not just a bunch of shit thrown together that I'm making work only through the sheer power of will makes things so much easier. With the way I'm trying to ramp up production to spend more time with my baby daughter, this is much nicer, I'm not gonna lie. And it hasn't totally lost the vibe either, like Koshi still mistakes my beat to shit Mesa cab as a fucking scratching post, but in terms of workflow and audio quality, which is a huge part of modern day content creation, this is a massive upgrade. Just some ideas if you're trying to get into the content creation game. But yeah, let me know if you want to see an upgraded studio and gear tour. Uh, I try to do one every year. I'm just not really sure much has changed in terms of keepers. Actually, no, that's a complete lie. There have been a lot of changes. But uh, let me know if you want to see that. I'm also working on mod project videos, so I have to prioritize. Anyways, it's never been a better time to start creating content. If I can do it, anyone can. And that's it for me. Love you guys. You've been awesome. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you for the next video.